before we charge off and start applying the MoMA distribution process, there's one more thing we need has a background thing, and that's about the distribution factors. This is probably one of the most important aspects of why we still teach MoMA distribution um, is to understand this, the impact of the relative stiffness of members that frame into our system, and particularly frame into a joint. So this is almost like the structure of, of example one, we, but we have put a fixed end, locked down what is going on at A and as what it is happening at C. We do have rotation at B that's going to uh, develop in response to a force, or rather a moment, that's being applied here at joint B. Okay, So we've got a left-hand span that's 5 meters EI for the bending rigidity second span is fi also 5 meters has twice the bending rigidity such that then K which is I over L then is um, what we've got for KAB and KBC will be equal to 2K. We have no fixed end moments because we have no applied forces and we have no cord rotations that will greatly simplify our slope deflection equations for each member end moment. So there's your MAB equaling 2 EKAB theta B and then substitute in, we get 2 EK theta B. And for later shorthand, um, let's just let B be defined as EK theta B so that we can just write that simply as 2B. And then we have MBA is not also 2B, it is rather not 2B or 4B. <laughs> All right, so of course MBA is twice as much as MAB given the pattern here of theta A being equal to zero, but theta B not being known and then of course we've got theta C being equal to zero. But twice as much stiffness, so we still end up with this ratio two to four, but then we have eight to four here. Now go to the joint free by diagram, show the member end moments, clockwise positive on the member end, that means counterclockwise positive on the joint. We've got both of those, and of course that's not the right subscripts, that would be MBA, and MBC for the proper subscripts there. Right? And the simple equilibrium equation then of course is that well MBA plus MBC and then minus 100 is equal to zero so therefore obviously MBA pl plus MBC is equal to 100 or in this case 4B plus 8B uh, is equal to 100 and therefore B is equal to 100 divided by 12. Substitute those back in up here and so we'll have 2 times 100 over 12 and that's going to be about 16 point, uh, what is that, 6, 7 and change. You substitute in here 4 times 100 over 12, that's the same thing as 100 over 3 or 33.33 so there's that 2 to 1 ratio and this will be then 8 times 100 over 12 equals then of course 66.67 and then finally 4 times 100 over 12 we're back to 33.33 note that these two which are the moment member and moments that are connected to joint B will sum to be equal to this unbalance that we have that in this case this unbalance was caused by the actual application of the in the original situation the moment Right. Now, there's a couple of things that we want to draw out out of this to get to this notion of what we call a distribution factor. All right, so take note here. Let's rewrite that equation back in terms of the original part of the slope deflection expression. All right, so that's MBA is equal to then 4EKAB times theta B plus then 4EKBC times theta B and that's going to then be equal to this unbalanced moment of 100. Right now I've, I haven't substituted in the, the more generic values of K yet right here um, partly because I want to illustrate something here. So we can factor out then the theta B that equals 100 then we got theta B equals 100 over 
then the 4ek theta ab plus the 4ek bc. When you then go in and substitute this back into the slope deflection equation for the membrane moment, look now what is going to turn out to be the case that our MBA will be equal to, well, 4EK AB theta B. And theta B is all this stuff. So we'll have 4EK AB over the sum of, oops, that shouldn't be there, should it? That should just be AB. We got the sum of those stiffnesses then times this 100. That right there is our unbalanced moment at B. Well, this whole thing right here is called the distribution factor for the B end of member AB. And it's just equal to the relative stiffness of that member over all of this, you know, so the stiffness of that member compared to all of the stiffnesses that come into that joint. Now, in this case, that would have been all the, these fours cancel out, so that's fine, but we have, and the E's cancel out, we'd have that K value for AB over K plus 2K, or that's one third. And that was certainly what we experienced, wasn't it? up here that that total moment of a hundred got split in a ratio in this case four to eight one to two that we had one-third of that moment that unbalanced moment went to one member and two-thirds the rest of it went to the other member because that of course is what we're going to get when we go look at then the distribution factor for BC because right, now this is going to be 4EKBC, which will turn out to be, uh, what? Sorry. We're going to have KBC over KAB plus KBC. Right? And that KBC is 2K over 1K plus 2K, or 2 thirds. Right? A lot of different ways to get that. You could have gotten it 8 over 4 plus 8, which would have been the sum of these guys. Could have done it with these. There's a lot of ways we could get there. These, of course, have to sum equal to 1 associated with all the members that frame into that joint. Right? And that's your distribution factor, that whatever is happening at the joint gets distributed according to relative stiffness of the members that frame into that joint. That is a really key principle. I'll say it again. The distribution factor tells us that the and any sort of unbalance gets distributed to the various members according to relative stiffness that come into only the members connected at that particular joint. Right? In the next uh, example we're going to apply this numerically.